Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to week three of the UBL and versus Blazing in the Toronto Total House. Yeah, this is a very tough team. Like as always, I'm I'm, try I'm starting with that, but this this time I really mean it. Much like Vipsis, I don't believe my matchup here is really that good. I have a few threats here that I don't switch in well to, so I could either decide to bring a defensive team to check them, or I decide to go offensive because that's what I do. So. I went offensive. We'll see if that works. But yeah, basically, this is a team that I don't switch in well to, and I I have basically decided to accept my faith in that aspect. And I don't mean that to be crude, but rather that this is kind of kind of scary. And it kind of is. I was gonna say, bear with me. I tend to cough a lot. I'm still kind of sick, which is the reason I haven't recorded live for a while. Um, having kids means that you get sick, and February represents the worst of that. So here we are. Uh, but yeah, I actually looked over my opponent's team and thought, you know, it's third key threats here. You know, we have Tornadoes, we have Ninetales, Bishop, Dolphin, Galventula, Cuff, <coughs> Coughing, oh, Mian Shao, Slow King, Saigard, Silva Lee, which can be any Silva Lee for that reason, Lurantis, and Charizard X. Now, I stated there are threats I don't switch into, um, one of them being Charizard X. Um, if that set up the Dragon Dance, that's GG to, to a broad aspect. I'm not gonna bring in a scarf on my own. I had a vision of Celestial bringing or coming with a scarf to be able to semi check it, but that's I didn't I didn't bring that. Um, hopefully that isn't a bad decision. Um, same thing here. A lot of Ninetales. I'm bringing a team that don't switch in well to that either. I had a vision of bringing my Mega Scissor here, but um, I had a lot of reasons not to. Mainly a lot of Ninetales is always going to be having Hidden Power Fire here. Like, that's the thing, like, a combination of Blister and Hidden Power Fire is enough to deal super effective damage towards my whole team, or at least neutral. And, um, it's absolutely going to have that, and if you predict right, I'm going to lose that Pokemon very early. So, um, and that's going to, would have been my default with this game. And lose, losing that and let him set up Veil freely is not something I'm going to risk. Because then again, then Charizard wins. Like, that's it. That's GG. Um, so yeah, like I said, analyze my opponent here, how he plays. Because I'm heavily going on what I've seen. And I looked at least, I think, at six games that I thought were interesting. Not from the UBL so far. Uh, we'll have week one to go for, and I don't believe that represents his team. But rather how he plays his team in different leagues. And what I saw was that he really, really likes to check people defensively. Um, and actually grow momentum by getting a defensive play. That's a very skillful thing to be doing. Um, I don't see a lot of players doing that. I think it's a very hard thing to do. I myself, playing very offensively, cannot even imagine how it is to play like that. But knowing that somebody does that right means that I can't go too offensive. I can't try to break speed here because it's going to have threats that are defensively active to parry me. Um, so the only thing I had was how how to maneuver around this. I have Pokemon that does really well versus them, but they cannot speed. And then the dialogue becomes to how do I outspeed them with slower frets and uh, thanks to actually Vepsis and Irish, we debated whether or not this team that I brought was good or bad. And I want to thank them because they thought it was bad. So if I lose, they be right. <laughs> But uh, basically, Vipsis enforces that Ayenchi can be extremely effective. I was very clear with yeah, David Yenchi and Conkeller is definitely gonna make it because they are Pokemon that are doing super effectively damage against most everything here and does a lot of damage. But the issue was they do not outspeed that many things. So how do I outspeed things? Trick Room. And I, I like I played Trick Room a few times in Generation Six. I do not know. If this is gonna work but this is my only thing I can do because this team beats me in every other way like I went over situation through situation there is no way I'm gonna be effective versus this team no matter what it brings it's gonna be tough issue of bringing trick room is that he got a slow king and I've heard it from everyone on the ass that you no know, it's a big risk and that's the thing though like if I'm not setting up trick room uh, then neither like Conkeldor is naturally slower Dianchi is going to be naturally slower than Slowking so if I don't set up Trick Room Slowking is going to be speedier than them and could very well take them out because Slowking is still 
Well, it hits fairly hard, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I, I took a few decisions too. Actually, I had three teams, but decided on Trick Room team, and I'm still uh, whether or not that was the right choice. But um, that said, probably gonna talk about the team itself to kind of give you guys an idea of my vision and what I was hoping to accomplish here, and then gonna wrap that up by talking which Pokemon I think he uh, brought or will bring <laughs> or brought. I have no idea what he brought. I'm pretty sure what he'll bring. Um, so, Thunderous, rather easy spread here, it's speed enough to outspeed the Alolan Ninetales, that's really the only Pokemon need to outspeed, it has in Power Ice and Thunderbolt, um, let's see, I'm pushing the wrong page to see the attacks, there we go, um, we have Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, Thunder Wave and Defog, Thunder Wave is here to, um, well, it's a sad excuse, uh, I guess to say for, um, trying to stop uh, Charizard X if it sets up. It also is a way of um, uh, destroying a little Ninetales from speeding Saigar, which comes to this game because I have a, another berry to be able to, of course, re recipient damage. So, yeah, Thunder's main set here is to check Tornadoes. That's really it. <coughs> Damn, this cough. Because Tornadoes is a Pokemon I don't switch in well to, Tornadoes switch in well enough. Um, and with leftovers, I do have a stamina gauge to go for. He has a really only one stealth rocker in Dawnfan, and Dawnfan really isn't necessarily a threat. And defog, of course, means that I have a prankster defog to get rid of Veil. So if things get shitty, I can at least prevent that. That was my initial idea, at least. I, that's really all I can say about it. I had a vision, and that's gonna represent that. Thunders, not important for the game, but it does have a layer of aspects here. Uh, the other Pokemon, this is going to go over the one that are naturally built before I go over the slower Pokemon. Um, Psygod, a fairly easy spread here. Um, we're really, really bulky uh, to be able to take hits from um, Charizard X. Uh, and this is a level 60 Psygod, so I can probably make this, this right. It's going to say it's illegal because you can catch it at level, what is that, 60? So that's the real stats. But yeah, nothing to it. One Dragon Ass, now Speed Tornadoes, barring any Scoffer. Um, the only thing I need to watch out for in theory is Alolan Ninetales, which I think are annoying versus this. Dolphin has in the power, or that Ice Shard, which can do damage, even though I'm fairly bulky, it's still gonna sting because it's four times effective. The attacks I'm bringing are Thousand Arrows, Extreme Speed, Dragon Dance, and Stone Edge. You have to be surprised to know that Extreme Speed do outspeed a Sucker Punch from... Uh, from Bishop, and I'm probably gonna play around that depending on how I wanna play this game, but that's... I wanna bait it for knockoff, so Extreme Speed is gonna make a ton of sense. Hopefully. Um, it's just a concept, like, the vision here for Saigar is to get the Dragoness up somewhere down the line and start, start doing damage. Uh, basically, there really aren't that many Pokemon to switch into it. Like I said, Dolphin is an aspect to it, Slow King can come into it. The, the rest kinda of stumbles here. Um, Depending on a Silver Valley, it can be a Pokemon that can pair me. I've seen Hidden Power or in Silver Valley Grass checking Psyguard, and it should be able to do so here too. Um, Stonish is there in hopes of another Psyguard. I know that Psyguard, uh, or not Psyguard, I mean uh, Silver Valley Bug could do the same thing, and it does deal well against Conkeldur. So I'm hoping this bug, if he brings it, but at the same, same time, I don't believe he brings that. But uh, that's my initial thought, at least. Basically, I don't have a fire move. Like, if it is Silver Valley Grass, then fuck it. It is what it is. <laughs> <coughs> Dear Lord. And now for the main event. Uh, the slower Pokemon. Tangrowth. Really, really easy set this time around. I decided to go super specially defensive. Because I'm still impish. Uh, or relaxed, I mean. But yeah, basically, Akabari to be able to take a hit of Flare Blades. A plus one, actually, from... Uh, Charizard X, that would be kind of exciting. Uh, the remaining moves, it leaves Storm is for Dolphin, Rock Slide is for the rest, basically, like and all the Nightels and uh, what is that called, Pokemon called? It's called um, Tornadoes, and Earthquake is basically filler for neutral damage. The thing is here, Tiger checks a lot of Pokemon here, like Do neither Dolphin, Bishop, or Psygod does really well versus this Pokemon, and I'm very aware of that, so I don't need to necessarily force it to be able to do super effective damage, it just needs to survive against them, and it's very capable of doing so on its own right. So, um, 
yeah, pretty standard. Like, Tangrowth was probably the least important Pokemon going into this game, but it's a filler and necessary Pokemon I need. Because other than, you know, Dolphin is going to be nasty versus me, and that's... You don't want Dolphin to be that. Um, so, right. Now we start, we're starting with the weird Pokemon. We're going to start with Mesprit. This is a very, very, very much Pokemon that's going to be severely set up upon if I'm screwing this up. Uh, because this Pokemon is a sack Pokemon. I have leftovers over Focus Sash. I was considering Sash, but then you look at the stats and you're like, nah, there is really no need for it. Mesprit is fucking fat, and we're going to actually act like it is. So we, we clearly are in Focus Sash. We are leftovers because we can get the recovery. We are impish this time around. Uh, no, we're not. We are relaxed. Uh, to be able to outslow a dog fan. How cool is that? That's kind of scary, isn't it? Um, so yeah, Healing Wish, U-Turn, Stealth Frog, and Trick Room. This, I'm gonna lead with this Pokemon, no matter what it starts off with. I don't care for Bishop. I think Bishop is a nice surprise that I won't care for. Uh, we gotta set up Trick Room, we gotta set up Stealth Frog, we gotta sack Masperate, and then setting Congelator. That's, that's game turn one. And two, and possibly three. Uh, depending on how I want to go, um, if Bishop bring if he brings Bishop, I'm pretty sure he's gonna lead off with that, predicting my misprint, and we go into show him the middle finger, and hopefully that works. Um, worst case scenario, he sets up a sword stance, and that's like, yeah, I still got conk, so I at least get the trick room up before knockoff ruins me, uh, or sucker punch, or whatever. Something happens. But yeah, U-turn is there if that's not the lead, or if he brings something else. Um, Mesprit actually able to set or survive a plus one Flare Blitz from Charizard. That's gonna be exciting, um, I think. But other than that, like, either U-turn or Healing Wish. Um, the thing is here, I have no reason to do either, because I'm slower than the majority of his team anyway. But if I'm getting a chance to, I will probably try to do it. And that's about it. Um, that's all I really have to say. Uh, then we we'll have... I uh, guess Jian, she kind of falls that We're going to talk about Conk last. Um, this is a very much a standard trick room, the Yenshi are quite nature. Um, out slowing, like I said, um, possible slow king. The thing is here, I decided to go with Moonblast and Diamond Storm instead of Power, power Gem. Diamond Storm does roughly the same amount of damage without investment in attack whatsoever. But the thing is why it's better is because. Tornadoes could be, and uh, I really can stress this enough, a Solfest. That's that's one of its best set, quite frankly. And just overall, Diamond Storm gave me a plus two. That means I can survive possible Steel Wings from stuff, which I fear it is matched up quite a lot, actually. So that was the main idea. Plus, if Slow King is Solfest, Diamond Storm does a lot more. And together with Diamond Storm Explosion, yes, because we have Explosion, we go into be able to KO that Slow King. So that Trick Room is the last move, clearly. And Dianchi's main role is, is kind of late game sweep or just set up another trick room for Conk Elder and then fall, depending on any wall break and whatnot. He he don't deal well with Dianchi. Like, Dianchi is a very strong matchup versus this. Like I said, Slow King is a very strong response. But other than that, there really aren't that many things that does well here. Bishop clearly is faster and can KO that way, but... <sighs> It really can't switch into a Moonblast either, so yeah. Mm, mm, I, I'm feeling the energy this game. I really hope it works. Or, you know, I'm gonna look like a freaking fool for this matchup. But yeah, like I said, there's Diamond Storm Explosion. Explosion is mainly there actually to get a Trick Room going. Then boom, Conk is gonna get in. And what's Conk gonna do? It's gonna mess things up. Hopefully. Um, the Conk Gallery set is, without a doubt, the most ridiculous thing I ever brought. It's... A brave life warp sheer force conk elder. The damage is beyond anything. He like it doesn't matter if he resisted, it doesn't matter if Veil is up. Conk is gonna conk and it's gonna hurt. And I really hope it works. I gotta rhyme in it. Because that's the thing, like I said before, if it rings slow king, it's going to be faster. If I'm not behind a trick room, I'm going to suffer and I'm gonna be ruined. And I'm scared for that, but this is really my only idea. Um, the stats here, quite self-explanatory. It's a standard trick room conk. Which it should have been, now that I think about it afterwards. I probably should go for a more... Ah, nah, nah, we want that HP. I think, I hope. Anyway, 
really really strong attack there I'm, i was considering flame orb but really the damage i put of life orb and shea falls are just mwah, it's superb so we're gonna have residual damage but we're gonna have rock slide instead of knockoff because there's really no points and a thunder punch for slow king which is oko by that and he could have a colbert berry variant of slow king and if he has that he's gonna be very very sad he had a walk on berry instead ice pumps does feel a lot of well a great filler and as i said before a program that switches well into gunkiller is Seal valley bug have a rock slide is going to be the difference between working and failing and rain punch is unnecessary filler i was considering mag punch i really were <coughs> but i don't think it will it won't work as well as i want to so with that in mind yeah we're not going to do that but yeah that's the that's the team i'm bringing and like i said here um going yet back to the team he has uh pokemon i'm seeing him bringing absolutely tornadoes like going down the line that's gonna happen tornado's gonna be there um all nine tails gonna be there shards is gonna be there uh jonathan's gonna be there then the rest is kind of up in the air but i can easily see the remaining two being well, I guess a combination of Cygar 10% makes sense. Like I said, Bug Seal Valley or Grass Seal Valley makes sense because Cygar still is actually quite effective as this team. And then I see if it brings Mian Xiao or Bishop. I can see Bishop being effective here, but it's kind of a risk also. But if it brings it, I'm going to be happy because that means that Mesprit actually fulfills its role. I think it does that anyway, but even more so versus the Bishop. But yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Um, I guess the other thing I should probably feel out is about Thunder 7 Thunder Wave and a Trick Room team. <coughs> the thing is here, the things I can Thunder Wave aren't, even when they're Thunder Waved, um, slower than my Pokemon that I want to um, bring on the Trick Room, so it's fine. But um, like I said, the Pokemon I want Thunder Waved if I'm using it is Tornadus, it's a Lola Nine Tails, and it is Charizard X. I don't care which one I paralyze, just I paralyze something. Uh, I think the best Pokemon to paralyze is a lower nine tails because that means Saigar loses a natural threat. And of course, hopefully I connect a Stone Edge if that happens. Yo, Stone Edge does what it does. I'm That's gonna be nasty if I miss that if that magic comes up. Oh, screw it. Rock Stide is too weak. It's for Conkel or something like pussies, but now Conk has it, so Conk is not a pussy always. Uh anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's the team I bring in and well wish me luck and uh, we go into uh, well this recording is going to be directly followed by the team itself so take care Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to the week three <laughs> of the UBL versus Blazon and his Toronto Total House you see my team analysis you know exactly what I'm going for I'm going for a trick room team and I was somewhat happy, I guess you'd say, to see uh, what my opponent brought. Because he brought Bishop, which I was really, really hoping for. He did bring the Charizard, which made sense for the matchup. A little night tells Tornadus and Dolphin made it. And we have a Seal Valley. Now the thing is here with Seal Valley. Depending on what type of Seal Valley that is, we could hopefully do well. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. Uh, my leader is going to be Mesprit. I'm going to hope and predict that his lead is either Dolphin or Bishop. I want it to be Bisharp because then he will stay in and thinking that he has the upper hand. Which I hope he doesn't get. Uh, that was my only idea. Like, that's the vision I'm going with. And, you know, we'll take the game from there. Uh, I'm going to take my screen away because it's, of course, disrupt the flow of the battle. And, huh, as stated before, I was still somewhat sick even the day after battle and bear with me if I have to cough. I'm gonna cough actually now. <coughs> Hopefully that's the only time. Happily I have coffee to survive this. So anyway, let's go for the game. As you guys may or may not know, this is the third different way I'm actually recording. Now recording live throughout uh, the battle itself. So anyway, start off with uh, I was feeling two things here. Uh, either I go directly for the Trick Room or I set up rocks, but I felt, you know what? I go for Trick Room and then predicting his Sucker Punch versus me, because he goes for knockoff, it's gonna do roughly, I think, 60% at best, somewhere down there. Uh, it's absolutely an offensive Bishop, that's what they do. They do a lot of damage. 
Now I am in theory trick or in pursuit trapped in this, so with that in mind, I gotta go for Stealth Frog on the Sack Mesprit. My opponent here go to the Roly Poly, to Don Fan, and he is absolutely predicting my rocks, which is fine. But the same way, I was really hoping he would just KO my poor guy here and let me get that momentum. Now, I'll actually stay in, knowing I was supposed to be slower, but I wasn't. So, I go for a U-turn, Rapid Spin of course did damage me, we do break the sturdy of the Dawn Fan, which I think is cool, but I was just so surprised that I wasn't slower. Uh, so anyway, go to Conkeldur, and Conkeldur does what Conkeldur does. Now here's the thing, yes, he's going to switch around a lot, and I was very aware of that, but I still went for the most damaging move I can think of, as we see Sil Valley Bug. And I was like, okay, we are prepped for this at least, but this is not, this is not good. But we do get a huge chunk of damage, my opponent here is going to go to the Metal Knight, which is the Bishop, stalling out the turns, we're going to connect the Rock Slide. I feel like, yeah, it's resisted damage, but it really, really, really does hurt. So, the Twisted Dimension is back to normal. Um, I'm actually, I think I stayed in here, I was not fearing myself to lose the Life Orb, because then he loses Bishop, and then all of a sudden, well, let's just face it, Diane should get that much better. Uh, so Drain Punch does a fair amount of damage, I guess, to Tornadoes, but let's be fair here, it has Regenerator, it doesn't matter. I'm going to switch out. Thunderous is my switch in. I was fearing him to U-turn here, but it still is my only play. As you go for Acrobatics, and it actually does a lot of damage uh, for being, you know, 65 base power. So I know now that this is physical, so I expect this thing to have Steel Wing. Uh, but that also means that it doesn't probably not have Icy Wind or Icy Wind or Hidden Power Ice. So Saigor is safe versus that. As he switched into his Saigor, I go directly for Hidden Power Ice, thinking I do a lot of damage. It does 10-20% maybe. This bitch is Assault Fest, and I'm saying bitch because Dawn Fan is now a key threat because it is the only Pokemon I would say that stopped Dayenshi from possibly sweeping if I set up a Trick Room safely. Um, so my opponent here knocks off my Akaberry, that's fine. Uh, I actually go for a Sleep Powder here, predicting his switch out to Charizard or his Tornadoes. We get Tornadoes, which is great. We miss the Sleep Powder, which is less than great. And um, that was probably my only big opening to getting up another Trick Room. So now the stress starts for anything, and my opponent, of course, feeling that it can't pivot around me, goes for U-turn. I was like, yeah, here comes Alolan Nightels, please bring Alolan Nightels, I want that thing paralyzed. As it brings it. <coughs> <coughs> and I was very happy with this, like I said, it is one of those Pokemon I want paralyzed, so Saigar can be more effective, and I don't need to rely on Trick Room that much. So, it might look weird for me to stay in versus this matchup, because all of a sudden I don't have a Tornado switch in. But the thing is here, like I said, due to it being physical, I do not fear Tornadoes that much anymore. Because it can no way in hell knock out my Saigar that easily. So I opponent here go for all there, that's fine, as um, I was feeling that this Pokemon could very well be uh, likely. So if anything, I was feeling that I want, I want kind of to bait it, uh, as in... Um, I want him to go for Blizzard, and I want to, of course, defog them away, sacking my Thunders, and then go into possibly my Mesprit, uh, because my initial thought here was that at least then I force him to go for another Veil, and I get a Trick Room for free, and like I said before uh, in my team analysis, that Veil isn't necessarily an issue for Gunkelder, it still do a lot of damage and very hard to switch into. So with that said, that is my plan. So my opponent here, like I said, he goes for the Veil, that's fine. Um, I myself, like I said, will set off odds. Uh, oh, I went for Stealth Frogs. Huh, I was really sure I went for Trick Room there. <coughs> no, wait, I was feeling that uh, it's better for me to get a Rocks first, because it's gonna actually ruin him more. As I put it now, go for actually Blizzard, and I managed to survive. And not only that, I managed to survive with 1 HP, which is really huge. But his hail stops also, so all of a sudden I can go for a healing wish, and while it doesn't necessarily mean anything, he can't set up another veil, and I am potentially forcing him out, and if he forces him out to Dawn Fan, he can't, um, oh, what do you say, he can't spin, because Ice Punch one it KOs him. So I get a really, really cool lead here, because I have two turns of Trick Room left, 
I am now a fully healthy Conkeldor, which necessarily didn't matter, and rocks are on the field. The residual damage are real. We are 4 6 at the moment, but we will start doing some damage. Because, yeah, the veil is here, absolutely, but who the hell cares? Look at this. Look at this damage. The tornado's got nothing. The veil is not saving anyone. And yeah, he has a berry to activate his acrobatics and make that stronger. Yes, for sure. But at the moment, this is looking tough. And I'm still have to play the predictions game. Uh, actually, I think I believe I kept going for rock slides and stuff like that. I was... I knew his only way of potentially winning against me from here on out was to try to soak damage, survive another series of hell. Oh, I actually went for Ice Punch. Hmm. It still does, I guess, fair damage. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I have one turn of Trick Room left. His Aurora Veil is now gone, so Rock Slide is gonna KO something. And all the switching it doesn't KO is Dawn which needs to, of course, spin. But he decides to sack his Silver Valley. <coughs> <coughs> and I get that. It's. I wouldn't say it's useless for this matchup, but it didn't do what I think he was hoping it would do, which was checking Conkelder, because he was bug and not grass. Which wouldn't have mattered because of Ice Punch, but yeah. Conkelder does exactly what I needed it to, which is breaking apart things. Now here comes Donphan. I know he needs to spin. I have no reason of trying to preserve this, because like I said, the, if he spins here, he's not going to do a lot of damage to me, and he's going to die. And that means that I don't need to worry about Assault Vest anymore for... Uh, for my Dianchi, which could very well be start working here. So we get the Dolphin out of the way. Kongelder is just not caring, and now we are now 4 for 4, but we are, of course, without Trick Room. So Kongelder is very much dying for these matchups that are gonna follow. So Chesta comes in. My easiest way of doing this was actually sacking Tangrove. It doesn't fill a role anymore. I mean, the things it was supposed to shake are dead. So with that in mind, yeah, we're gonna sack it. Look at this, Acrobatics does slightly over 50%. It is doing 50%, absolutely, but it doesn't matter. Now, I actually went for Rock Slide here, predicting him to try to uh, re or reset Aurora Veil and trying to catch it on the spot, but no, he's going to go directly for the kill, which is good, because now I had a matchup where I can send in the NG. Now, the NG is fully healthy, so it doesn't die to Steel Wing, but it will be very well close to dying, and if I get another Trick Room open and die, then that's going to be great. But my opponent actually switches out, which I was really surprised about as he sends in the Metal Knight. Probably think that I would go for Power Gem or anything like that, but no, we go for Trick Room. And now I'm just gonna go for Moonblast, because Moonblast at this range KO Offensive Bishop. Uh, Moonblast actually does a lot of damage to anything besides Shards at this point. And while we don't have rocks, we still are able to do, well, a good chunk of damage to most of this matchup. So Moonblast, that's a 50% hit. Damn, I hate coughing. And switch into his Metal Knight, sacking it in the process. And uh, yeah, I think he was trying to stall out as well as he could for the Trick Room turns and try to preserve his his uh, Bishop. But yeah, like I said, being offensive means that unless it was invested itself, that he couldn't survive that. And now I'm actually going to follow this up with a Diamond Storm, knowing that my turns are ending. And I was feeling Steel Wing is an aspect here, and I was hoping to get a plus two from this. I do not get that, unfortunately, and, uh, well, while I do have another Trick Room in me, I can't actually KO the Shards on X from this range, I simply cannot, but I am faster, so with that in mind, yeah, I'm gonna go for another Diamond Storm, of course I am, hoping for that plus two. I have a Shuka Berry in case he has Earthquake, but I think Steel Wing made a lot more sense for this matchup. I do find out, however, after this Diamond Storm, I'm gonna say it, that he was... Dual Stab, Roost, and Dragon Dance. So, well, I do get my plus two here, ensuring my victory. Uh, he was never in a spot to be able to KO me, which I was very surprised about. I'm not going to deny that aspect. But I was really thinking it was going to be three attack and Dragon Dance. <coughs> but no, Dual Stab. So, all of a sudden, I get a rather, rather safe 4 oh no, 3 0 victory versus my opponent. And. Um, yeah, I just reset my Trick Room to kind of... If something weird happens, at least... Uh, Conkeldor can wrap the game up versus both of the remaining Pokémon and go for Moonblast just to be kind of... No, Diamond Storm can miss after all. But, yeah. We do, like I said, I, we get a, a rather good victory here. And I, I really, really just gotta enforce 
that I don't believe this game represents my opponent's caliber in battling whatsoever, but it's very clear, to be honest, that I got a playstyle versus him that he wasn't ready for. Um, we were really talking about it later, that he was of course not predicting Trick Room, and since he didn't have Slow King, for example, which I think was a Pokemon that was going to be very, very decisive for this matchup, um, him not bringing it made Trick Room all that more viable, and of course, first turn really are. It's very much in my favor because I, wa I got what I wanted, uh, and I got my opponent to stay in thinking he was in a good spot. Uh, it's just one of those weird things, like, it works because I I got the first turn right, and then, yeah, I think the survival with the... Uh, <coughs> really sorry about that. Um, the survival with my uh, Mesprit versus that Blizzard and Blizzard on the hail stopping from there, uh, it really damaged my opponent. I think he deserved that KO with his Alone and Items versus my Mesprit. I think Mesprit all of a sudden, it didn't do anything important that game, but it did make Trageller that much more better each time he came in. So, to my opponent Blazing, I really just want to say GG. Like I said here, um, I was going for uh, trying to disrupt his playstyle as much as I could, and this was my best way of doing so. And like, It really could have gone in a different way had my opponent brought Slowking. I am very, very aware of that, as I think I was, I probably wouldn't have been able to, to uh, stop that whatsoever. And... Um, I'm only glad I won. Like that's that's the <laughs> that's the thing basically. I I I can't be more honest than that. I think my opponent plays this game um, as good as he could have or should have done. It just that I got him pushed back from his playstyle, and he needed to all of a sudden play defensively without attacking. And that's you never want to be in that position. And I'm happy I got him to that position because all of a sudden my significantly slower and weaker team by default could start poking holes. Conk Elder could poke holes, but like I said, wasn't speed enough to pull that off. Trick Room did allow that, and the entry sweeping at the end is only due to that the Pokemon that were able to check it well was either damaged enough or was dead at that point. Um, that's basically it. I, like I said, had Blazing Blazing uh, Blazing uh, brought Slow King, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll have a different game and I wouldn't be I definitely wouldn't have been sweet with Dianchi. Like I said, Dianchi had a plan B versus Slow King and I was set up a trick room and I explode. Um and hopefully KO from there. Um I'm very happy I wasn't forced to do that because that would have been basically my last shot at Trick Room because Mesprit was, with all sense and purposes, dead by default from turn one. So yeah, with that said guys, really hope you enjoyed this game, and definitely check out my opponent here, Blazing. He does tremendous uploads, actually. I'm very surprised he doesn't have more subscribers, because like I said, he's very good at narrating stuff, and yes, I think there there is a caliber to his methods of battling. I think it's very enjoyable, for me at least, to watch, and I think very much that most people think so themselves. Well, look at that. <coughs> this cough is killing me! <laughs> So anyway guys, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week versus the Arkansas Funders, I believe. I might have said that wrong, but yeah, anyway, he has the Funders logo, so I'm, I'm scared. I really am. I usually scared about everybody from USA. You no, know, they're, they're Reese cookies and watch not that. Mm, a lot of stuff going on there I don't want to know about. That was the dumbest thing I've ever said. Hail, hail Budweiser. <laughs> anyway guys, take care. Bye.